African spur thigh tortoises, they'll be out. It just bit my finger. And the big thing about monitors is that if you lose trust with them, you're never going to gain their trust back. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the vlog. You know, I do have to ask myself every now and then, how do you actually tame a dragon? I mean, isn't it amazing to have a lizard like Elvis here? That's just an absolute pleasure to work with. And it's like I've literally said in the past, he literally is like a dragon or a dinosaur pet. I mean, I absolutely love this guy. He's so absolutely amazing. But you know, you do have to spend some time habituating these animals. And you have to ask yourself, is it because of the way that they're immediately habituated to humans or is is it something that's domestically bred a little bit? There's actually this interesting thing. Think about domesticated cats or even dogs. These were once wild animals and over time through breeding, you've actually made them more and more domestic. So basically what that means is that over time, you're basically not only breeding an animal, but you're kind of breeding the tamest animals. Because oftentimes we're gonna keep like the coolest animal back each time because it's an amazing animal. You're like, oh my God, this is a great animal. I'm gonna breed it and then it can actually pass on behavior. So each generation in, oftentimes, it gets tamer and tamer. And there is absolutely no doubt that reticulated pythons are a perfect example of this. When I was a kid, and even now and then when I run across people that used to keep reptiles 20 or 30 years ago, and then they come to say the reptarium and they see these beautifully tame reticulated pythons, they're always like, what the heck? Aren't retics extremely mean? The fact is, is that 20 years ago, the retics that were either wild caught or F1 generations right out of the wild were extremely aggressive or you could say extremely defensive snakes regardless they definitely like the bite but now that all these years have gone by and we're into f3 f4 f5 generations of retics you can see the majority of them are puppy dog tame now so basically we bred out a lot of that aggression and i've said that sometimes when it comes to color phases you'll have a particular color phase of say a ball python or a retic or a burmese that seems to be a little bit tamer than the other animals and for whatever reason, when you start to breed them, the offspring are oftentimes tamer too. And what I think it is, is that behavior can actually be bred. And like I mentioned earlier, oftentimes we're breeding the tamest animals because they're the funnest to work with. And then their offspring are inheriting that amazing behavior. But there is no doubt habituation is really important. Kevin McCurley over at Nerd kind of led the way when it came to monitors. And that is exactly where Elvis and Toothless is from. And as soon as these guys are hatched, he starts to interact with them literally right out of the egg it's almost like a bonding thing with like birds you know almost like the first thing they see is a person the first creature that comes in contact with life, to trust and then maybe they're just a little bit more habituated to it take for instance toothless here the black dragon this is a great example of both captive breeding that causes tameness through generations and habituation. Again, Kevin McCurley produced Toothless and he worked with this animal in every monitor that he's ever produced right as soon as they're hatched. He starts to interact with them. He starts to work with them so that they're not afraid of human beings. And as you can see, Toothless is absolutely incredible. And we try to work with this animal as much as we can. And what I find interesting is kind of what I was talking about before is that black dragons have now been being bred in captivity for two, three, four generations and they're all extremely docile. I mean, it's very rare to see a black dragon that's not as habituated as toothless. And I really believe that that's just the domestication of these animals. Kevin actually calls these guys urban dinosaurs and I couldn't agree more. I mean, this is truly a dinosaur that is as close to a domesticated pet as you possibly can be. But we're spending a lot of time with toothless, not just handling them, but also even feeding him. I want him to be extremely comfortable with everything we do. So that way when he gets five, maybe even six foot long, he is just a puppy dog tame animal. Another day, another feast for the tortoises. Well guys, you only have like two days left if you're looking to get some of your RJ merch and then they're gone forever and you can get it for Christmas. So it's a great Christmas gift. Look at this shirt here. This, is, this thing is absolutely incredible. Take a look at this. 
see, it's even magical. You guys can buy it and do magic tricks. So go ahead, go ahead. The link is in the description. BrianBShop.com. Again, only two days left to get your merch. You can even get a coffee mug. You know what's crazy with all the tortoises that we have? Each one of them has a different attitude and personality. And Savvy is crazy. I mean, this is the one tortoise that I just think is just the most personable tortoise of all of them. In a way, it should probably be over at the Reptarium. But the problem with Savvy is it doesn't get along with the other tortoises like leopard tortoises but just look at how he just like stands really high up it's not like he just looks it's not he's like give me some more give me some more food he is just a monster he is super cool and a lot of times especially african spur thigh tortoises they'll be ow it just bit my finger oh whoo, now i know how it feels to get bit by this little dude it's really not that bad but a lot of the sulcatas are actually a little bit shy and uh savvy is far from shy all it wants to do is come up and hang out with you it's always like right up on your feet and looking up at you saying where's my food and i tell you what you got some pretty good chompers there buddy not all monitors are are really tame and you have to remember that chicken strip the albino nile monitor is out of the wild it was hatched over in africa so number one nile monitors are typically just a little bit more nuts and crazy than say a savanna monitor or a water monitor but on top of it it is a wild animal so it doesn't have any generations for calmness so maybe five or six generations on the road nile monitors would be as tame as water monitors i'm not sure but let me show you how i have to hold chicken strip it's a little bit of a process and when it first comes out it gets a little bit crazy easy when he's first out, sometimes he can get a little bit nuts. But as you can see, I'm never going to actually restrain him. The big thing about monitors is that if you lose trust with them, you're never gonna gain their trust back. So what I have to do is just let him kind of crawl through my hands and get to the point where he kind of almost tires himself out a little bit. But again, I'm not restraining him, I'm not grabbing him, I'm not trying to make him feel like I'm holding him tight. I'm just letting him crawl through my hands. And the longer I do this, sometimes it can take up to five minutes of just kind of walking him through my hands over and over and over and over again and every now and then I'm gonna to be totally honest with you he'll even bite me sometimes but then within no time you'll see he'll start to calm down and he just kind of slows down a little bit he gets it going and this is all about building a relationship again water monitors are just more naturally tame not to mention they've been bred generation after generation when you've got something that's fresh out of the wild number one and also a species that's known to be a little bit crazier you have to work with them a little more my hopes are is if I can work with chicken strips like this every single day he'll continue to realize that handling isn't as bad and I can tell you what guys it is so much easier to handle him now than even say a month ago or two months ago when we first moved him into the reptarium now he's gotten comfortable with his habitat and then also being handled tons look at already I mean he's totally chilling out and now that he's out I can keep him out for like an hour and he'll just kind of hang out with me not fight me or anything and this is how you build relationships with these monitor lizards or what I like to call real life dragons. And then she said she loved the bananas. Oh, hey guys. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my God. God. What's up? Guys, man, I am uh, starved. What about you guys? I'm yeah. always hungry. You guys want to order a pizza? Heck yeah, I'm hungry. You paying though? Yeah, no, I'll grab it. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, sweet. Yeah, hi. Uh, can I get a large cheese and pepperoni? Can we get green peppers on it? Can I get green peppers on that as well? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Onions, onions to add onions. Uh, yeah, can I get onions on that as well? Dude, I'm so sorry. You, you have to get sardines. Sardines. No, wait, wait! No, no, not Lucy! Get in there! Get in there! Barely fits! Wait! Hey, you stay! Yeah, uh, cheese and pepperoni will be fine. Oh yeah! Lucy is looking amazing today, oh, yeah. and Noah, by the way, uh, what do you Ooh. think? Isn't this cage looking real comfortable? I'm thinking that uh, if I hit 100,000 subscribers, I'll do a 24-hour challenge in here. That's what I'm thinking. Oh my gosh. Hey, listen, I we will be extremely protective <laughs> of not only Noah, but also of Lucy if he does it. Do me a favor, Noah's getting close oh, yeah. to 100,000 subscribers over on sure. his channel. Please go to Bad Choice Noah, link in the description. Let's get him to 100,000, and then you can see Thank him you. spend 20 for hours in Lucy's cage. And just so you guys know, I will stay here with him the entire time so he's safe yeah. as well as Lucy doesn't get stressed out or anything else. I like don't that. wanna die. No, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Okay, but there's good. plenty of places for you to sleep. 
Yeah. Like you could sleep right? No, you can't no sleep. No sleeping. Right. No sleep. You're gonna be up 24 hours? I think last time I just brought waters. This time I might bring some Red Bulls. All right. Do me a favor. Go show him some love. Let's get him to 100K and okay. let's have some fun with the Lucy Challenge. What's interesting is I've really looked at behavior in reptiles when it comes to the success of my breeding company, BHB Reptiles. I always say that you can read all the books you want, you can talk to as many people as you want, but the snakes or the reptiles themselves really tell you what's going on. So it's the way they behave. Again, the way they're laying, the way that they're on the heat or the cool side of the tank, the amount of food they take, all those things are triggers and tells to where they are in the breeding cycle. So for all these years, I've been looking at the behavior of animals really more from a breeding standpoint, whereas now I think I'm more interested in the behavior of the animals when it just comes to kind of the interaction they have with human beings, not only myself, not only my crew, but also the patrons that come into the Reptarium. I think it's just amazing to kind of have habituate them to being handled and starting to really look at their behavior and how they are being handled and really react to how the animals are reacting to being handled over at the Reptarium. So again, I think it's maybe a little bit of an interesting combination of both heritage, being bred to being tame, and also kind of that continue, again, habituation they have to being handled to the way they are. We've seen animals go from kind of a little bit touchy when it comes to being handled to being puppy dog tame, i.e. the blood python next door at the Reptarium. And I think it's just amazing that we've been able to kind of use our knowledge of behavior when it comes to the breeding side and start to apply it to the animals over at the Reptarium. But like I've mentioned before, I don't ever look at myself as an expert on any level, and I'm certainly no behavioral expert when it comes to reptiles. I'm still learning, and I'm still kind of trying to figure this whole thing out, but I am absolutely loving this kind of new direction in life. I'll still continue to love the breeding side and use all that knowledge and experience that I've gained over the last three decades. But now I'm really excited about this new thing, about learning about the behavior of animals and to habituate them to be amazing, just like my girl Salt here. Speaking of Salt, what do you say we weigh her and see if she's put on any weight? <laughs> She is so cute. And the last time we weighed her, she was actually 67 grams. So let's see if she's put on any more weight here. Oh my gosh, look at that, 74 grams. My girl is growing. She's eating and she's looking absolutely fantastic. And Pepper was 115 grams and he is chunky. I've got to imagine he's been growing because he's been eating like a pig. Look at that, 135 grams. So he gained 20 grams in just about a week. Oh my gosh, Pepper, you are getting so chunky, monkey. And with that said, guys, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog here and maybe spend the next hour or so, just some quiet time here in the Reptarium. As you can see, it is nighttime outside, so it is a perfect time for me to just shut the lights out hang out in my Reptarium, enjoy the animals for a little bit, get a little peace and tranquility. I definitely need that. We have some travel coming up here in just a few days, heading down to Florida. Gonna have an absolutely epic time with my buddies Forrest, Noah is coming along, Miguel is coming along, so it's gonna be absolutely crazy. I can't wait to bring you guys along on the adventure. And as for now, I am going to wish you an amazing day, evening, night, whenever you happen to be watching. Your support means the world to me, and I truly, truly love you guys so much. Do me a couple favors before we get out of here. Can you smash that like button, turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video, which is every day, seven days a week at nine o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. Leave a comment down below so I can read about your beautiful faces. Be kind to someone and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow. And come on guys, you know the routine by now. You know I'm not gonna at least give you guys a little bit of the tour here at night. I love this. I tell you what, I could stay here all night long just looking at cages. I am so happy at night when I'm here alone and the lights are off. I just love it. Oh my God. I hope that you guys have an absolutely amazing day. And as for me and my girl Lucy here, we will see you tomorrow. Mm.